Hi, this is Henk Akkermans and this is Smart Asset Management Lecture 1, Section 2, Technical Asset Management. The term asset management can create some confusion. If uh, you look it up in many dictionaries, you won't find it. If you look it up in Wikipedia, you will see one of the reasons for the confusion. Asset is such a generic term in English that uh, it can be used for yeah, basically anything. Most obviously and most prominently for financial assets. There the term asset management is quite well known. Um, we are talking about technical assets. So there is a note in Wikipedia that yes, asset management is increasingly used for infrastructure and in the business world for uh, machines, etc. Uh, things that last for a long time, investments. Um, and how you can best manage those physical assets. So we are up there. Uh, talking about technical assets, there's a whole wide variety there. And I use the uh, typology developed by Klaas Smit here in the Netherlands for uh, uh, explaining how wide that is. Well, first of all, there are assets that are in one place. Concentrated technical assets, uh, Smith calls that. Things like uh, production plans, buildings, bridges, uh, stuff that really that is in one place and that needs to be maintained, that needs to uh, have an optimal life. Other assets are distributed. They can be distributed in a network, such as the entire road network or the canals, pipelines, cable, wires, so many networks of, uh, of, of assets. They can also be distributed, not in a network, but simply, well, uh, scattered throughout the country, like machines or um, uh, air conditioning equipment or pumps, etc. Um, there are also uh, assets that are really meant to be transportable. Of course, you can lift up uh, an, an, a big pump and distribute it there. But it's not meant for transportation. Things like fleet, like aircraft, ships, trains, those, uh, and of course cars, those are meant to be uh, transported. Uh, they are indeed transportation devices. And another kind of uh, transportable uh, uh, technical assets are the portable technical assets, especially those uh, that uh, we as consumers use, but also the professional sector, of course. Uh, there's this laptop or, or your smartphone uh, or anything that's really meant to be portable. And increasingly the mobile uh, world is, is, is uh, upon us. All these are assets and uh, they may start on the right hand side for something that is meant to last uh, a century or many decades and has an investment of billions if not millions and up here you may be ready for your new iPhone after one year and it has cost you a few hundred. Uh, but there are all assets and in many of the principles apply to all of them. However, there are differences and uh, in this uh, slide I zoom in on some of the differences in how you typically manage them. Those consumer goods, you bring them when your screen of your iPhone is broken or your Android. Uh, uh, mobile phone, uh, you bring it to a shop, a repair shop somewhere. They don't come to your house normally. There's a service center for them. Uh, the, the, the fleet, they are maintained, not in the air, of course, but somewhere near uh, an airport uh, where they uh, where you can uh, fix them in a hangar or something. Uh, trains go to a repair shop. Uh, ships go to a repair uh, wharf uh, to be fixed. So there are maintenance facilities where, uh, in both cases here, the asset is transported to that central location. Uh, the location doesn't travel to them. That's the other way around in, 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 in the other setting because uh, a canal cannot come to a maintenance facility. The maintenance has to come to the canal. Uh, so here you have mobile maintenance teams that actually uh, travel around along the canal for inspection and the, or the pipes or, uh, or, the, or the cables. Um, they, um, and that creates a totally different work organization. In, uh, for machine and other equipment, 
uh, field services is, is a is a normal term. So you the the the, um, the um, field service engineers travel to the place where the machines are located, and 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 maintain uh, them there. And finally, when there is a concentrated uh, uh, when when you have a plant or something. Uh, then often the engineering department is co-located uh, with that. That's not so much for a big building or a bridge, but still those departments are often partly uh, co-located with the assets. So this is just one uh, difference. Where are the people that do the uh, maintenance traditionally? And of course, through digitization, this is all changing because there are so many more things that you can do remote nowadays. Asset management, in any case, is a very big part of the economy. Here are some, some figures from uh, one uh, developed economy, the Dutch. Uh, it's from a while back, but these numbers only have grown bigger. And you see that in, in terms of the, the, the Dutch economy, which uh, um, is a few hundred billion a year in terms of national income, that something like 30 or 40 billion of it is in maintenance uh, directly and not even we're not counting the uh, economic activity that becomes possible because of uh, those well-maintained facilities. You see then that the infrastructure is big, the process industry is big, uh, fleet, so all the, 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 the traveling, uh, or the, so the trains, the planes, uh, the, the automobiles is big. Real estate, so the, all the buildings, etc., are, are, are big. And as a separate sector, everything in food, beverage, and pharma, which is sort of halfway between process industry and manufacturing, is also big. Um, these assets are in trouble. Uh, a lot is needed to maintain them because mostly, certainly in terms of the public infrastructure, but also many of the plants, etc., uh, in, in, in the process industry, uh, they were uh, built, well, in the post-war period, the 1950s, 1960s, so they are now well past their original technical lifetimes. So there is just one estimate uh, for uh, public infrastructure in the Netherlands. Uh, and again, if, if the, the, the whole uh, national income is something like 400 million, if you then in 10 years have to invest uh, uh, over 100 million, <coughs> well over 100 million, in a billion, I mean, sorry, uh, in, uh, in, in, in maintenance and upgrading of only the public infrastructure, you know that you look at a serious task. If you look in the manufacturing industry on the right hand side, both discrete process, food and pharma, you see that a large percentage of those assets uh, is reaching the end of his lifetime and will soon need to be either replaced or closed down or receive a major upgrade. So aging assets is a big deal in a large part of, of asset management. The good news is that there is uh, a whole range of uh, new technologies and new processes, new ways of organizing uh, that uh, can be used uh, to upgrade uh, this asset management, to make it smart, uh, and that uh, are being used there. The uh, figure that you see here is a synthesis of the top 14 trends that came out of a Delphi study that World Class Maintenance uh, set up in uh, 2016, it was published in 2017, uh, amongst uh, some 50 uh, experts in that field of maintenance from all those sectors we just saw. And what you see there is a whole range of, 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 uh, of possibilities that go from the very technical one, like degradation model or mobile solutions, to the much more social ones like cultural change and knowledge management. There's economics in there with performance-based contracts and life cycle costing. There's IT in there with smart sensors and, and integration of asset management IT. Those uh, 14 topics are indeed the topics also of the remaining 14 lectures for smart asset management. They organize our, uh, our course, as if to say.